In this scenario, we're going to see the effects of running a rogue DHCP server on a virtualized network in order to execute malicious code on a client system. We can see here that the system um, that we're going to be attacking or targeting uh, received this IP address from the valid or legitimate DNS mass server at 192.168.1.2. Its temp directory contains yum.log, which has been there since the initial installation of the system. Okay, if we restart the DH client service to attempt to pull an IP address from the rogue DHCP server instead of the legitimate one, we can see the effects of uh, loading the DNS mass service on the rogue DHCP server uh, to run a shell shock attack against the client system, which is vulnerable. So here we can see the DHCP range provided by the DNS mass service is 192.168.1.200 to 254, and it has a lease time of one minute which we can effectively use as a cron service uh, to continue to run some sort of code on the system every one minute. So we set the one default gateway to 192.168.1.1, which is the valid default gateway on the network. And then we can see here at the bottom of the file, we've added this option uh, force 100, which is just echoing uh, a string to the temp shellshock file on the client system. So if we go back on the client, the, the service has, has provided an address, and we can see that it has provided a name server 192.168.1.3, which is also the rogue DHCP server running that service. If we run if config, we can see it still has the same IP address of 192.168.1.226 because it's an unused address on the rogue DHCP server. And we can see that that shellshock file was written to the temp directory as the root user and it has a timestamp of 1436. We can see that the contents of the shellshock file are exactly what we intended to put in there over in the dnsmask.comp file on the rogue server. Okay, if we just check the timestamp again, uh, we can still see it's 1436, and we can see that we've skipped over to 1437, but we have to wait till the whole minute has processed uh, for the DNS mass service to actually push the new file, because the system has to gain its IP address, um, other DHCP options, and then finally our shellshock, um, writing to the shellshock file on temp um, is activated or ran. If we go back up, we can see all this commented out code or options in this configuration file. And we can still see that that lease time is set for one minute. And over here, we see that the minute has passed and our shell shock was written again. And the new timestamp is 1437. So effectively, this attack could be used to run something at certain time intervals on the target system or a group of targeted systems.